I am starting today in Sylvia, Kansas, and we're gonna explore Trails West Road, which is gonna run through some small towns in Reno County, and some pretty interesting history. I'm starting the day near Sylvia. Uh, I stayed in a B&B a &B last night called the Prairie Oaks Inn, I think, and uh, what a wonderful place. You know, it was uh, on a, you know, a farmhouse that's got multiple rooms and there were other people staying there. Incredible breakfast, home-cooked breakfast, animals everywhere. So if you're interested and in, if you like this video and are interested in maybe exploring this area, I would highly recommend uh, the B&B the, the &B out here. It was only $85 and that includes a breakfast that you would pay probably more than $20 for anywhere so it, it's it's uh, well worth it. It is down uh, some back roads for a couple miles. A little muddy today. It rained last night. So beware if you are going this way and it has rained uh, that you might have to go through some some a little bit of muddy roads. I, I was able to get through it in my car without a problem, but just a heads up on that. I found this road on my road trip this summer when I was on US 50 because we are right here basically on US 50. And I thought this Trails West Road just goes through these small towns was probably originally US 50, but in research after I got back and started uh, editing these videos and, and looking online for old maps, I found that actually Trails West Road was not US 50. US 50 originally, when it was first started, went straight west out of Hutchinson. And and that's kind of the bigger city in this part of Kansas. and. And it just went straight west and then came down to Sylvia, which is where we're gonna start our video today. And then I found a map in 1968 that proposed 50 going just north of these towns, which is what US 50 is today. And then in a 1970s map, it was officially, that's where US 50 was moved. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure why they didn't you know, go right through these towns because these towns have been here for a while. They are on the railroad. You'll see the railroad through all these towns or right next to all these towns is why they developed in the first place. And just, you know, maybe somebody that understands the history of US 50 better than me could tell me why they went they went north instead of just going right through the towns. Um, I, I guess I understand in the 1970s why they did that because they were trying to bypass the towns. That's kind of what all these roads do and they bypass the small towns. But before that, I thought, might make sense to come through here but they did at least move us 50 closer to these towns and and maybe that has helped them somewhat because it's a little easier to get to them today we're going to visit four places that are actually still towns they're all small towns today along this trails west road and then there's a ghost town there towards the end we're actually going to go west to east probably should have gone east to west as it's trails west road but uh stay in stay in the night here in sylvia we're gonna head east because that's just where we're starting the day. Sylvia, pretty interesting town. This is the largest town we're gonna to visit today. Population is 215. And it started in the 1870s. It was, it was actually called Zenith, which is now the name of a ghost town just east of here. I did a video a long time ago about Zenith. And originally it was this called was called Zenith. And then when the railroad came through here, in the 1880s, uh, the name got changed to Sylvia, and then Zenith, you know, the next town over. And the town grew, and population peaked in 1910, it was 634. It's about three times as large as what it is now. Obviously the railroad had a lot to do with that. And when US 50 was built, it came through here, right near here, in the 19, you know, 20s, 1930s, and helped keep it a decent size for a while. And then uh, the railroad stopped, uh, you know, as a point here. And just people started moving away. And as the town got smaller and smaller, and it's still, you know, there's still a town here, but it's not uh, quite what it used to be, about a third, like I said, a third of the size that it used to be. Uh, when you walk around, you can still see some old bricks, probably from the original uh, early days of the town. On the sidewalk, there are some cool old buildings and and the railroad is still active. It went through here while I was exploring around. So great place to start the day here in Sylvia, Kansas.
there's Sylvia off into the distance, and here is Trail West. It's the ending slash starting point. Our next stop here in Plevna, Kansas is much smaller, only 80 or so people living here. The, the largest the town in the U.S. Census ever got was this little over 200 in 1920. It's possible it was bigger before that. Um, it was certainly around, you know, earlier than that, 1870s, 1880s. And, um, but there were no official census population figures back then. There's uh, this, this school auditorium is very impressive and so you can you know two towns and two impressive uh, remnants of schools that used to be there and obviously before you know before even US 50 which was built in the 1920s um, you know there were schools that needed to be in every town because there just wasn't you know ability to get to places as easily back then there's not a ton of other old buildings there's the the city hall right there in the middle of town and that's a pretty great old building it has it says city hall bank probably the post office kind of everything in one little building here when you only have 80 people you don't need um, a huge building to do all your business We've gotten now down to Abbeville, and it's almost exact same size and population as the previous town, Plevna, but it just feels like there's a lot more going on here in Abbeville. I'm here in the, the rodeo arena, I guess you'd call it, where they have Abbeville Frontier Days in May. It's been a rodeo they've been having since the 1960s. So that's definitely something to keep the town alive and going. Actually, there was a Canadian rock band filmed a video here, and uh, I'll, I'll insert that here. So. You can, you can see it, there'll be a link in the video to watch the whole video from Abbeville, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Abbeville, once again, was another one of these railroad towns and, and slightly grew, and, um, but didn't, didn't become too large, a couple hundred people. And population, just like these other towns along this road on Trails West, has, has gotten smaller, but it hasn't died. And with the frontier days here, that obviously brings some people to, to this. This is a very nicely kept um, little arena and and in town there's not a whole lot. There's a couple old buildings, post office. Interesting fun fact about Abbeville that it was it was named after the first baby born here and you hear about how towns are named after people from the railroad or you know somebody that maybe owned the land and so it was the there was a baby Abbey that was born here and that's how it got its name.
come to Partridge, which is the last incorporated town of the day. And interesting how this, this is set up where you got the first and last towns, around 200 people, the two towns in the middle, around 80 people, almost identical. And you know, the Sylvia is basically on US 50. And as you get over here on Partridge, US 50 and 61 are right here, or real close to here, and 61 goes right through town. So probably these towns are just a little bit bigger because just the, there's better roads that are near them. And uh, Partridge is inter interesting looking at the populations. It's been about 200 or 200 to 300 for the entire existence since they started doing uh, the population census. Like I said, that was the last incorporated town today, but Trails West does not end here. We have a few miles down to um, just a, a place on the map that says Cooper's Corner or Crupper's Corner. And then there's a ghost town just near that as well. I believe those will be the last couple places on this trip. It's a real nice two lane road. It does remind you of something like US 50 or Route 66. It's a, it's a nice road. I didn't think there would really be anything here, maybe a, a convenience store or something like that. Uh, but there's actually quite a bit, and I actually also talked to the guy who lives here. And there's an old gas station built in the 1940s, and um, the man here said it's probably named after the the owner. You know, the corner here was named after the the owner. And then there's a, a old appliance store, abandoned appliance store, and a few old buildings probably related to this store. So I uh, had a little bit of a history. It was never a town in any way. It's, it's kind of conveniently located amongst a couple of the, the busier roads in this area. So somebody thought good place to start a couple businesses and obviously had a short lived history of success. And, and now interesting little stop. It's got some interesting history to it. It was originally called Bernal, like the post office was called Bernal or Bernal, and the railroad started calling it Elmer, or they decided to name the station Elmer. And so I guess eventually the town became Elmer and uh, was, was platted in the 1870s and for a time was a, a community of, of somewhat significant uh, level. And, and now it's, there's not much left. There's, a, there's an old elevator here. Uh, there's a building or two, not hard to know how old they are. And there's a couple houses. Uh, but um, interesting story is that here at the Elmer station during prohibition, uh, the residents of town would use this station to have whiskey dropped off in five gallon, you know, lots or jugs or something like that. And so this is where that would happen during prohibition.
So Trails West Road is not quite over. There's about five more miles left. We'll head down to the end. Probably nothing there, but we have to at least finish the road trip to the very end. I like to be comprehensive in the video. The road goes to here and stops technically so if you keep going that way there's the arkansas river and there's technically a few more miles of trails trail west road there that there's just you know just like this road so i wonder if it originally went through here right through these guys and maybe there was a bridge at the arkansas river i don't know somebody with the history of reno county maybe can watch this and tell me Maybe we'll ask these guys. What do y'all think? Okay, I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna drive the last few miles of Trail West. I was thinking that was it. I should have looked on the map, known that it could have kept going straight across the river. I don't know. Let's go see if we find out anything that'll help us see if there was a road that continued through there or not. Driven around the river, kind of south and then back up, and this is where Trail West would have come through if it went straight across the river. So now we'll go that way for the official ending of Trail West Road. came from that way on Trail West, and this is the end of Trail West. And then when you go that way, it's now Southwest 60th. Now as I was driving down here, I was trying to figure out why would Trail West not be named Trail West anymore and just turn into a road like Southwest 60th, which doesn't seem very interesting. And then I realized right here, this is the county line. So Harvey County is over there, and this has been Reno County all day. So I don't know. I don't know why Harvey County wouldn't have wanted a cool name like Trail West instead of Southwest 60, but I guess they didn't. So this is officially the end of the road or the beginning of the road if you're heading west on Trail West. Fun day. I like to spin all of the death go rounds. This one has two of them. Partridge has the most death go rounds per capita in the world.